everyone, it's Desiree, and I am very excited to be here with the 10 card one kit for Love from Lizzie for January of 2019. I was very excited to be asked to be a guest designer and to find out that it's because of a group I was asked for. So thank you if that was you. So let's get started into card one. Yes, I had to get used to 10 cards, one kit. I know, uh, just this. Okay. So I use the die, I cut my pot, or I die cut my pot, and I used a craft knight just to slit, uh, slice into the top, all right? I grabbed the six by six papers in rainbow order. So I have the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, and the purple. And I have this die, it's just a curved straight edge. Um, and I used that die cutting twice through each of the papers so that I could get these arcs. Once I had those arcs, I just had to trim up the top, but I wanted to make sure the one end was smaller than the other end. So I could just create this explosion coming out of the, of the pot. Now, and again, you could go either way with that cut that you use with your craft knife, you could have gone towards the front. Um, I just chose to go to the back. So either way, that's fine. So now I'm just arranging my papers, setting them inside, because I did go from the length, uh, the majority of the length of the pot, and now I'm just going to fan them out. Now, once they're set, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it going, hmm, how am I gonna flip this now? Because of course nothing's getting glued down as I'm doing this. Um, so the best thing that a lot of us always have in our stash is our post-it tape. Yes, that, that was the revelation with the finger. Yes, <laughs> I could use my post-it tape and make sure the stickiness is going out because they were perfectly placed there and I didn't wanna lose them. So now that I just have this little bit of tackiness going, I can gingerly flip that over and if you're hearing that my cat feels the need to play with a toy right now, um, now I'm just going to overload the back with lots and lots of double-sided tape because this is how I'm going to adhere this. I'm going to remove the release paper and I'm going to set this down on my panel. Now I did use a frame die for my stash, a stitch rectangle um, to cut my panels. Once I've removed all the release paper, I set it down, and now the fun part, I do enjoy when there's like a fan of color or paper coming off of the edge of my design panel. I do enjoy cutting that. I don't know. It's right up there with watching the embossing powder melt and, you know, all those things we love to watch. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I get it. I did use my large shears um, and just went right through the paper like it was nothing. I'm using one of the stickers from the sheet that we got. I'm removing some of the stickiness away from it. I'm just gonna put a piece of foam tape on this. I want that propped up and that's going to sit right in the middle of my pot. And I'm just gonna set that right in on an angle. Now, you can accent the pot. You could use some highlights with a white gel pen, um, or you could use white paint, whatever you want. Totally up to you. You could use white pigment ink as well. I'm gonna use my tape runner and adhere this right onto my standard A2 size card base. Please know all of the card bases that I'm using in this video are standard A2 size, which means that's four and a quarter by five and a half, and all of mine are top folding. I do tend to gravitate to that. I'm using the Glitter Nouveau drops that were in the kit, and they were called Yellow Bird. Okay, on to card number two. So I grabbed two of these uh, frames, these die cut frames, um, and I'm taking one of them and cutting the top off. I'm going to adhere that to the back of the full one that has all four sides. So this is gonna give me a little bit of a dimension 
for the front of my card. Now I also grabbed a piece of the pattern paper and I just cut a scrap piece from that. Now that piece is measuring two and a half by four right now. Now I will be trimming that down a little bit, but that's what that opening is. It's about two and a half. So I have my panel. Again, I use one of my stitch rectangle dies from my stash. And I'm just looking at the placement. So I know I want it to sit there and I'm going to grab the stars from the sticker uh, set that we got. And I'm just going to place those one in the upper left or right hand corner and one in the lower left just to kind of set this frame going on. So this is going to be an interactive type card. I'm going to use my liquid adhesive to adhere this down onto my card panel. Now I'm leaving that top strip alone for two reasons. One, I don't want any glue there. And two, remember I cut the bottom one. So it's kind of raised up off of the card. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to make this piece into a tag. So I'm going to trim the one side. I'm going to flip that over and cut that so that it can be even since I didn't use a die. And this is how it's interactive. So what you can do is this is going to look like a tag that's sitting in there. Now you can leave it just like that because I did use pattern paper. You could use plain paper. But what you could do is if you're giving this to somebody, now I'm going to glue this happy birthday die cut with the red glitter down. I'm going to set that right there and I'm going to use an acrylic block to set that down. Just wanted to let you know that. But what you could do is depending upon who you're giving this to, if you have a picture of them, you could set a picture on this tag and then it would sit in the Polaroid frame. So if you wanted to embarrass them and have fun, you could certainly do that. Or you could put another picture in there, put a picture of you with a fun, you know, what I call the Shrek face. I don't know if you've all ever seen Shrek with the, with the, with donkey when he comes in. Okay. never mind. So, you could do that as well, but it's really nice. There's enough room if you wanted to add a photo or add anything else that you wanted to, or maybe you wanted to decorate this tag with a piece of your artwork besides the card. Um, possibilities are endless, but at least now you have a different type um, of an interactive type card. I'm sure somebody else has done this, so I am not going to take this credit in any way, shape or form. Nope but it is fun. I did give one of these to a friend of mine and they absolutely loved it, especially the picture I found. Oh yes. Very old. Mm -hmm. So there's your interaction. You could also put a note at the bottom if you wanted to. Okay. Card three. So I pulled out my oxides. I've got pumice stone and I've got hickory smoke. I grabbed one of the six by six rainbow papers and know the paper pads, whether it's eight by eight, eight or six by six is an add on to the kit. So if you just really like the papers, you can certainly go to Love From Lizzie and her shop, which of course will be linked down below, and purchase the papers. Matter of fact, there's a lot of bad ones for this. So I'll try to identify them as we go. I'm starting out with the pumice stone and I'm using my Distress uh, Blenders. These are what I use for my Distress Oxides when I want to blend with a brush. I'm just putting a very light coat or layer of the pumice stone. It is a very faint color, but I don't want it too dark. I'm then going to come in with the hickory smoke and I'm just going to hit the clouds with that. So I want the clouds to have that color. This stencil is great, by the way. They are perfectly laid out so that you can just keep going. Look, I can just take it, go right next to this, and I've got more clouds coming in. So um, awesome. I was loving the stencil and then the edges on each of the sides. It, it was just great, compact, and it's all right there. I'm just going with some more pumice stone just to fade out some of those clouds so that they're not too harsh. And now I'm going to do the next quadrant. So I kind of, where I have the one set up completely, the rest of them I'm going to do in quadrants because I wanted them to be staggered. I wanted all different shapes to fill up this pattern, but I didn't want to use one of the edges of the stencil. So I just want the image of the clouds back there, if that makes sense. Well, we'll find out. 
So that's what our panel looks like. I think is really cool. I had a lot of fun with this stencil. I'm grabbing my Versafine black ink and I'm going to stamp my sentiment. When it rains, look for rainbows, which is true. So with the rainbow paper, I used the cloud dye, which is awesome that it matches the stamp, by the way, just say. So I die cut two gray clouds in two different shades and one in the rainbow stripe paper. So I'm going to take the gray and I just added some of the, the, the hickory smoke distress around the edges of this. And I'm going to adhere them on the front, um, just above this sentiment, but over those other clouds as well. I will definitely be propping up my rainbow cloud. So I'm going to add my um, double-sided foam tape there and I'm going to set that in place to know where I want to put that and then I'm going to set the other gray cloud as well. I'm also going to prop that one up using double-sided foam tape. I'm going to trim off the edges, but you can see just that rainbow cloud is just sticking out and making an appearance. I find, I mean, there's many things and many people that inspire me when it comes to this wonderful craft. Um, it, I'm in awe of all of this um, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. But what I do find that does inspire me a lot are the sentiments. So that sentiment just said black and white or gray and white have a rainbow cloud. Um, so that's what I did. So for our next card, so for this one, I'm using the, my Simon Says ink in fog. Now this is going to dry back a lot, but you can still see it when you're on white. I'm using my Nina white paper because I'm going to use some of my alcohol markers. Now I have Copics. I have the full set of Prisma colors. I got all kinds. I mix and max. So I'm using my C1 and my BG10 believe it or not. So I'm just going around the edges. So I put the gray down first and then I'm going to come in with this. It's like a tealy blue green color thing. Uh, and then I'm going to come in with the colorless blender because I want to fade that out. I want it to have a soft edge. So, and that's what my colorless blender is going to do forming and I'm going to do that to all three of the clouds. Now to save time, I did do a lot of die cutting and coloring off camera because I've got 10 cards and I had to get used to that. This is awesome. I cut a little note card so that it'll fit in that envelope and I have sending showers of love. So again, I was very much inspired by that sentiment as well. Now, okay, I'm loving these things these little peel offs. I have seen them forever and now I have them. I'm very excited. Yes. I'm excited over the whole process, but these, I did do a wiggle dance. I'm just saying, I'm just saying because they are awesome. So I had to use them to accent the sentiment that's on this little note card. Now that little note card does measure about one and a half by two and a half. Now it's going to get trimmed. A little bit because I wanted to play um, with this size. Again, I'm going to come in with some hickory smoke and I'm just going to shade the upper half that's going to be outside of the envelope. So here we go. We just keep trimming here. This takes forever. So I have that, but then I want to put it on an angle. So now I've got to cut off the corner. Yeah, you all didn't need to see that, but that's what I did just so that it could be cockeyed or on an angle who likes to be called cockeyed, right? Um, within these envelopes. Now those envelopes as well, there's two of them that came in the kit. If you remember my reveal, and I'll make sure I'll link that down below as well. And at the end here, um, but the envelopes themselves, there's two different styles or two different colors. They are available as an add on as well. So with my three, clouds, what's great is the drop downs that come, whether it's a heart, stars, or raindrop, they are actually designed to fit with the cloud. So I'm positioning my clouds in place 
and I'm stamping with my Simon Says Fog, and then I'm going to set my clouds in place. So I've got these three clouds that are going to go across the top of my card, and I have the hearts coming from the clouds, the bright clouds, not the gray clouds, but the nice pretty blue clouds. The last one, the third one that's going to sit in the center, I am going to prop that up using my double-sided foam tape. And again, just a small piece, nothing too big, because I do want that to be the focal point, because that's going to be right above my envelope. And I'm just going to tuck that in under the cloud to make it look like it's coming from the cloud. So the hearts coming from the clouds, sending showers of love. See? Okay. For some reason, I just do that. Now, I was testing the fog on the back of my card. That's the beauty of paper, isn't it? It's two-sided. We can try things out on the back panel and just keep our fingers crossed it doesn't bleed through. It's an amazing world. I love it. I used one of my walking, uh, my wonky stitch rectangle dies for my panel. Just wanted to make sure you knew that. And I set that on my standard A2 size card base. So again, with the clouds, I was just loving the clouds. Loved this cloud, <laughs> whether it was the die or the stamp. But I used the pattern paper and I went with the 8x8 size because the images were a little bit bigger. I cut three and then I just added some shading with um, my Copic marker, C3 just came up on the bottom and then I use my clearless blender as well to to bring that to, to break it out blend it out I was very much stuck with grays when it came to these cards as well against these beautiful bright colors I did use my versifying black at one point but you know what after I used that I didn't use it again so fog was it or hickory smoke those are the two inks that I used stamping through here. So I thought that was um, kind of neat, kind of interesting. So for this one, I have my three clouds, and from these clouds are the stars. So I have these coming down, and of course, the sentiment that I'm going to use is when it's dark, look for stars. And what's really beautiful with this sentiment is, one, I love the, the straight font and then the script font because the script font is absolutely gorgeous but within that script font are little stars at the beginning of the end of the word stars i know how many times can i say stars all right um, but i just thought that was beautiful and didn't realize it until after i stamped i thought i made a mistake but now that i look at it i see that so no mistake it's what it's supposed to look like and i absolutely love it I'll set, after I stamp that, I'm going to set the final cloud in place, and I will trim off the edges. All three of my clouds were propped up using double-sided foam tape. I'm then going to come in with the drops that came in the kit, Yellow Bird, and I'm going to fill in all of those stars on the clouds, because I want them to be yellow. Now, what's awesome, the reason why I gave a thumbs up is because I forgot to put my panel on my standard A2 size card base before I did all that. So it was pretty iffy if I, my hand was not going to go through all of these drops that I just did on the card. You know, I forget it every time. I get so focused. I, 99.99999, as many times as you can go, I always work on a design base. So I always forget to get it on to my card base before I do any of the liquid stuff. Okay, so this one, card number six. We had a lot of fun with this one. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did in card four with the clouds, with my Copics between the gray and the green and blue and all of that, and I'm going to die cut it. This is only going to be one cloud, and I'm going to use the raindrop one. So I have that set. I also die cut from the black cardstock in the kit uh, the pot again. Now I'm not going to be slicing into the pot. I'm going to get my cloud set because there's nothing else that I'm going to do up there. But I also pulled out all of the gems 
that were included in this kit. Now, just so you know, they are an add-on as well. Um, if you're interested in getting those and they're bigger packs. So when you see these add-ons, there's, there's more that you'll be getting than what is in the kit. I dug into my stash for all of my glitter paper. Now she has glitter paper available too. I don't. Um, and I'm just, I used the die cut for the gold coins and I went to town and I just cut, 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 cut. So I added, used my liquid adhesive to the top of the pot and I added a bunch of them. So I wanted to look like that they were just coming out of this pot. I'm going to use my double-sided foam tape on the back of that. Now, of course, I added my foam tape before I put my sentiment on the pot. Yes. So I am getting smarter because I'm putting my design panel down on my card base first. This is right about where I realized, okay forgot the sentiment because I needed that to go onto the pot. I'm going to use my anti-static tool. I got a lot of foam, double-sided foam there. I should be good. Although I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm going to use my Versamark ink and I'm going to stamp that right onto the pot. And I wanted to angle it just a little bit. I used my white embossing powder and heat set that until it was melted. And of course the sentiment says rain is nature's glitter. So you can see, you get it? I have my glitter coins. Okay, I used my microfiber cloth to clean off my anti-static um, powder. That's usually what I use once I know that it is cooled off and I don't smear the sentiment across the paper. Yeah, done there, done it all the time. I usually have a wax pencil that I use to pick up my gems and stuff. Yeah, that wasn't going to work on glitter. So I actually used my craft pick to pick all of these up because there was lots going on there. So then with all the gems that we got, not the pearls, because we also got pearls too, but with the gems, now I'm putting the gems into the raindrops. So yeah, there is a lot of glitz and glimmer and shimmer and all kinds of happiness going on on this card. It's very bright. And I'll be honest with you, I'm usually not a rainbow person, but these were fun. So card number seven. So I had all of these letters and I'm like, you know what? There's gotta be something that we can do here. So I grabbed a long piece of post-it tape. I didn't want to use my ruler. So I'm going to spell some words. So of course I had to sit there for a while. Of course, okay. Okay, I'm going to spell this. I've got that letters yet. And if I spell this, do I have enough letters there? Which I did. So once I had it mapped out, I'm using the post-it tape as my guide for the letters so that they're straight. Again, instead of a ruler, I, I would have to tape the ruler down. I, I'm a klutz. And through this video, there's a lot of things that went flying. Um, nothing got destroyed and nothing was hurt or damaged in any way even me. But I've just found that the post-it tape just held everything in place without destroying anything. And it was easy for me to handle at that point. So, so far we've spelled hugs and we've spelled love. And now down in the bottom corner, I'm going to spell smile. So those are pretty much our sentiment. I mean, why not make our own? Absolutely. I cut a piece from the six by six paper pad and I'm going to make sure that's lined up. I want that to go right across in between all of the sentiments that we've spelled out so far. And I had to use the wooden die cut that was stamped with love or engraved with love. Yes, I'm using the yellow peel offs and I'm going to put one on the top and one on the bottom of the pattern paper, which this is, I know everyone has said it before when it comes to these, this is exactly why I love these. You don't need, if you forget to put cardstock underneath it, but you want to have it somewhat framed, these do that for you. So it's perfect. Um, so you don't have to peel that off to put a piece of cardstock underneath. They do it for you anyway. I trimmed off the edges and I adhered um, with liquid glue, my wooden die cut, and then I've cut a piece of the pattern paper so that that will sit on top of it. And yes, it is off-centered. I went a little bit to the left, but that's okay. 
I grabbed the, um, I'm going to call them iridescent peel-offs, and I have one in solid, and then the piece that I had left, I was just able to take it for the front and the bottom, and it'll just look like that it's continuing through. I just wanted those two thin lines to be on the one side of our panel, which while your eye gets directed to that, you're not focusing on the fact that I made the panel crooked. <laughs> Set to one side. See, there's a method to my madness. The glitter drops are coming in again, and I'm just adding a few um, below the pattern paper and towards the top. That's card number seven. So for card number eight, I had to dig into the to the to the ribbons. So just so you know, yes, I did use items from my stash, but I really did try to use all of the components within the kit. Um, just to show you the different ways that you can create with these components. Um, so now we're just going to focus on the ribbons. And no, when it comes to a lot of these side components, I know I've been saying it along, so I'll stop after this. Um, there are add-ons that are available. So I'll just make sure that there's a link down below if you wanted to see them. So that's one of the beauties um, of her kits is she has all of these pieces that are in there. But if you're looking for something specific or you just have to have more of it, it is available for you. So one of the ribbons was perfect. Clearly had a sentiment. Happy birthday. It, I just happened to put it exactly the same on the angle that I needed to make it perfect with the hearts. I, don't, I will never be able to do that again. And I'm using my double-sided score tape for that. So I set that down, made sure it hung over so that when I put the ribbon, I could just bend it around the side. I am going to come in with some iridescent peel-offs to the top and the bottom so that I can frame this sentiment, so that that is the first thing that people look at. Same thing, I'm going to take these pieces once I trim them and put them back on my sheet. I'm going to bend them to the back as well. Now, the next one I want to pull in, and it's the one that just caught my eye, it's this Rick Rack. I am in love with this Rick Rack. So I'm saving every piece of it. Yes. Making sure it's not too much to overhang. And I'm going to use my liquid adhesive to put this one down. And then on the back, I'll secure it with some double-sided tape. Um, just to make sure. Now, of course, I dropped it, so I've got glue everywhere. But that's the beauty of liquid adhesive. By just real quick getting it with your finger, it cleans up. So life was good. And here's where I'm just going, I'm sitting there figuring out, okay, how am I going to do this? I'm going to use my double-sided tape and just make sure of the angle. So even though it's sitting the way that it is, it is going to bend going in a different angle when it's bent to the back. So the next piece that I'm going to bring in is the black satin. And I'm just going to set that across. So with the peel-offs, they frame the happy birthday. The rickrack kind of gets its own frame with the black satin ribbon down below it. Just to give that a little bit of a frame as well. You may see that I keep on switching out my scissors. So I have my yellow scissors. They're for paper only. They really will not cut ribbon because they're just for paper. So I have these little blue scissors. They are for fabric and cords only and ribbon. So just somebody always asks. So that's what it is. So now that I, I cut a piece of blue from the large eight by eight cardstock, and I cut that to be a scant four and a quarter by five and a half, which means it's j cut just under four and a quarter and just under five and a half. So I'll see a little bit of the card base border. Um, but I just wanted to have that hint of color coming around the outside. I loaded the back up with double-sided tape because of all of that texture that's sitting in the back. I just wanted to make sure everything was trapped and was not gonna go anywhere um, on, off of this panel in any way. I'm going to set that right down onto my standard A2 size card base. And again, that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And this is a top folding card. So for card number nine, the 
Polaroid frames are coming again, and I did double them up upon themselves. And then I cut a piece about the same size as that Polaroid frame, and I'm using my tumbled glass and chipped sapphire oxides and my blending brush that I use for them, and I'm making blue clouds this time. So I wanted the tumbled glass. I know clouds are supposed to be white with hints of blue. I wanted my clouds blue and gray. I want the clouds to stand out. I didn't want them white. <laughs> so once I have the, t the tumble glass down, I came in and accented with some chip sapphire. So we're going to make a shaker. So I have my piece of acetate already cut. I have the two pieces adhered together already. So now I'm going to use my liquid adhesive and get my acetate down onto this chipboard. So the these are by Doris, at least these are the ones that I have that are by Doris. I also believe Stampin' Up! has them as well. These are strips that are perfect for shaker carts because they are a nice skinny width because I could not imagine myself trying to cut my Scotch 3M foam <laughs> to that size. So these are perfect. I'm going to use the beautiful sequin pack um, that was part of the kit. There's hearts, there's sequins, there's little sequins, there's big sequins, all kinds of sequins. And then I'm going to place my panel in place. Now I made sure that my panel was set the right way. I didn't want the clouds upside down, meaning the dark to the top. I wanted the dark to make sure that it was still to the bottom. So we have all of this beautiful shimmer going on in that shaker and you can see the clouds in the background. So I'm going to go straight to my card base. I'm not going to work on a design base, uh, design base um, and then adhere it to my card base. So the sentiment I chose is life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. So I figured with the clouds, now they could have been gray, but I wanted them blue. And with the sequins in there, it kind of inspired me to create it that way. That's what I saw when it came to this sentiment. I am going to use a lot of liquid adhesive on this because I just want to make sure that this piece does not go anywhere. And as always, I always set it on an angle. Um, very rarely do I set those on a 90 degree angle. I like it to be different. I grabbed some of the pearls. These are in the teal color or the light teal color, and I'm just placing a few of those towards the bottom and off the upper left-hand corner. And that is our shaker card. I think it's really cute. For the last card, I had all of this beautiful paper. So how could you possibly showcase all of this beautiful pair, uh, paper? The best way, let's layer it, and let's layer as many as we can. So I grabbed a couple of the sentiments from the sticker pack and I put them on the black card stock included and then I fussy cut around it. It helped to frame. I'm going to use my tape runner and I'm going to start adhering these layers. Now, yeah, I did it again. Crooked. I, you know, I was just off. For some reason, I was pulling to the left. Not the right, but pulling to the left. It was just the area that I was going to. So it's okay. I fixed that by making my panels crooked. So I have the orange and the black together. I'm going to have the pink and the blue together. And then I'm going to have the yellow and the white together. So since I went off to the left with the orange, I have the pink on the blue and I'm going to set that on an angle. Now, both of these sections are going to be propped up with my double-sided foam tape. So this is going to get um, tilted to the right. And then the top one's going to get tilted to the left. So it kind of, again, it distracts your eye for being more to the left. For me choosing to be on that left-hand side for some reason. It's what I was doing. So, again, we don't throw the card away. Oh, my God. And we don't start trimming and doing all of that stuff. Just go with it. Let it go. Remember, 2019. Let it go. It's okay. You can do something to make the human eye get deviated from that. So just by making those panels on an angle and offsetting them, it helps to deviate away from that. I'm going to use my liquid adhesive again to adhere this down. And I use the special day for the front. And on the inside, of course, we're going to say just for you. And we're going to set that down in the bottom right hand 
corner. So that's what you can do with a lot of pattern paper. You have some great dimension. Now remember, when you add dimension, check to see what it would cost to ship it or mail it. Uh, bigger envelope, possibly, and so forth. So these are the 10 cards that I made for the Love From Lizzie January 2019. 2019. I can't believe it. Card kit. I was very excited and truly honored when I was asked to be a guest designer for Love From Lizzie. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I just say thank you to all of you. Um, from what I'm understanding, as I said, it was in a face group. Something was asked. Who get what get guest designers would they like to see? And I was one of the people that was suggested. So I say thank you. Um, to me, that's an honor. That means I think I'm doing something right for you. But I hope you will give this kid a try. It is a lot of fun. Um, yes, we know that when we ship it, when we're in the States, um, it is a little bit costly. I know she's working on this um, when it comes to that. Just know that when you do go onto the site too, if you're interested in subscribing, you're going to see a high mark. Make sure first you change it to US dollars if you're in the States. Hello. She's got multiple links there. And know that you're paying for two months first and then plus added in your shipping. So you're paying for that time right off the bat. You're not just paying for one month. And then the following months, you'll go just to the one kit per month that you would be charged for. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All the products that I use, and of course, links to the Love From Lizzie website and many other things like blog and add-ons and everything else will be linked down below as well. And as you can see, I'm showing you that you can also look at the reveal video that I did. If you're curious to see exactly what was in this card kit, that will be set there as well. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'd love to have you here on my channel. We have a great time and I get some great ideas from all of you. I hope everyone's having a great day. It's going to be an awesome year for us. Remember the theme, let it go, but always remember what's most important, everyone. Always be creative.